Call the order at, uh, let's see, 7 p.m.? Yeah. On the notice. Outstanding. All right. So, can I get an order, uh, a motion to approve the minutes of October 8th? Yeah. I'll second that. Second. All in favor? Five Outstanding. Oh. Great. All right. Um, yeah, so the financial warrant should wait. And depending on if we will hold the public comments until the uh, superintendent right. gets here. Um, in that case, why don't we go to the principal's report if you don't mind? Sure. Um, on Friday, November 8th, we held our annual Veterans Day observance ceremony for students and staff of Central Illinois Elementary School. The ceremony this year once again featured taps, a flag lowering, and folding demonstration as well as a posting of the colors. Um, this marked the 11th straight year that we've held this event. Um, one consistent theme throughout the years has been an incredible person, individual, behind helping make it happen, and that's um, retired um, Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Dan Van Dalsen. <clears throat> and I have a brief um, bio here that I'd like to read in honor of Dan. Uh, he's a Sunderland resident. He began his military career at the age of 17 where he joined the United States Air Force and worked as an air traffic controller. His last military assignment was right down the road from SES where he was the commander of the Air Force ROTC detachment at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst. Mr. Dan Valson retired in September of 2001 as a lieutenant colonel with a combined total of more than 38 years of service in the Air Force. So very impressive. Um, just an outstand outstanding <clears throat> Sunderland resident. Uh, additionally, on Saturday, October 26th, marked the return of the Halloween Hayride um, for the children of Sunderland. School Council Community Representative Cindy Benjamin was the driving force behind making this happen. Um, the Hayride coincided with the Halloween dance, which is a new sixth grade tra tradition here at Sunderland as well. I'd like to recognize a few people um, who are instrumental in also making this happen. Um, these are all Sunderland residents, Jeffrey and Joe Hubbard of Gothic Top Farm, James Thomas of Thomas Farm, Joe O'Connor, Ted Smirowski, Mary Ellen Ahern, Amy Hubbard, Police Chief Eric Dimitropoulos, Officer Matt Morin, and Fire Chief Stephen Benjamin, who all helped in various capacities to make the event happen. Addition additionally, um, other local farmers supported this event. Hank and Buzz Wagner of Wagner Farm and Chad Dizek of Maple Line Farm. Uh, monthly school committee update on the early, the progress of the early childhood playground. We've secured close to $40,000 of funding um, for this project. Um, the school council and a few other members of the parent body are helping with this. Um, I met with another parent this past Friday who's going to really be helping with the fundraising aspect of this. I have a meeting set up with the capital projects manager as well from Deerfield Academy to um, who oversees big projects there and that's, he's going to give some advice about how to move forward. So we're definitely moving in the right direction. Um, as we've talked about in past meetings, we're trying to secure as much funding by June 2020 so that we can go back to the town and apply for the ADA grant. Um, so we're still a long ways off, but um, definitely we're making exceptional progress on that. Important dates coming up, PTO meeting tomorrow night. <clears throat> we have a few more early release days between now and um, holiday vacation in December. The, um, there's a school council meeting on December 2nd. December 4th has an LPAC safety meeting led, um, led by me. Uh, the fifth grade has Cafe Sun on December 4th. Our annual Barnes & Noble book fair is taking place on Friday, December 6th. That event is organized by our library media, media specialist, Rachel Kidder. It acts as a um, wonderful start to the holiday season and also a great fundraiser for our school library. Middle of December, we have data meetings, and then also, as I've included in the past um, reports, International Night in January and Arts Night in March. And that's it.
Outstanding. Yes. That's <clears throat> good. First, I've seen a real progress in terms of funding for the getting going on the funding for the child for the playground. So that's, yeah, that's we're terrific. Making, making definitely significant progress. <coughs> that's uh, another thing I should mention on um, one evening in October, I met with the Sunderland Water Commissioners Board, and they agreed to pay for all water related costs of the project in terms of the water fountain. Um, so it's the pain of the pain for the water fountain and also the um, connecting it from um, existing plumbing inside the school. Great. So we just, I need to get a quote um, for what that will be and however much it costs, they're, they're willing to uh, take care of. Yep. All right, let's see. Uh, in that case, financial statements. Great, okay. Um, I have a here for you. Peter, are you doing notes? Yeah. I have the, I wrote down the warrant. Um, oh, okay. In the dog. Thank you. There are 11 warrants presented for signature, totaling $83,647.34. Uh, I had previously emailed out the general fund and school choice expenditure reports for your reference. I do have paper copies if anyone wants a copy of them. Um, I did go ahead and review all of the budget accounts in the database against the workbook as promised. Um, so all the accounts have been cleaned up. You will see that there were some funds transferred to the appropriate account. They were booked wrong and correctly. So um, there's some movement there, but there's nothing to be concerned of at this point. Um, there are a few lines that were underfunded, but we were able to move some money around and and get what we needed in those lines. Um, the only other comment that I wanted to make about that before seeing if you have questions is, um, I did make the adjustments to the budget with the new IA contract. Mm -hmm. um, and even though the percentage was lower than originally um, built into the budget, there was actually an increase in wages because so many of the current IAs were on the highest step and there was an additional step added to the budget. So it changed the numbers a little bit there. Um, any questions about expenditure reports? Um, I'm just, I'm assuming the case, but I just thought I'd ask the, we get as part of our packet a, a list of any personnel changes or additions in the current in the past month or something like that that, okay. that was provided to us I'm assuming that any financial um, implication of those either changes or additions are built into your numbers they will be adjusted we haven't replaced um, Paula is retiring Paula light from frontier mm -hmm. um, and we're restructuring some of that I was um, I was thinking ones here that were just at the school here and there was one. Oh, at the school level? Yeah, yes, this, at the this school she level. Here. I'm sorry, I thought you meant central office. No, no, staff, these here. you have a retirement in central right. office. Yes. Every time in a, a change in staffing comes through the office, the adjustment is made in the budget. So it's, it's already built in? Yes. And it's, it's in yeah. your statement that everything is under control? Correct. And uh, more often than not, Ben and I have a phone call about, you know, where is this person previously paid from? You know, what step were they on? What are we looking at for change? Um, most of the times before the appointment form even comes through the office, we're having those conversations. Right. And then I think at our last meeting, you, uh, there was concern about uh, the uh, state of the early childhood revolving account because, you know, we had we're, started we're, the year with a low number. And I'm just, again, I'm sure you're paying attention to that. And yeah, you didn't early mention childhood it here, is so. okay for this year. Okay. I think what we need to look at is moving forward the okay. sustainability of that program with the existing expenditures okay. versus the revenue. Okay. Yeah. Just <clears throat> something I would like to take a look at down the road, and I <clears throat> consider it not something. I mean, I you know, it's your first year here, and I I'm not want to toss something at you that when you've got plenty to do, um, but just something, you know, at some point I'd like to have a look at, which would be that there are a number of accounts that are um, separate from the just the general fund account at the town accountant's office, mm -hmm. you know, for example, the school lunch revolving fund, mm -hmm. you know, there are a number of ones, um, and I, you know, I've 
in the past I've thought it's a good idea, uh, you know, not necessarily every year, but certainly every you know, two or three or four years to go and take another look and just make sure <clears> that, you know, both on the revenue side and on the expense side, we're doing, you know, we're doing what we want to be doing. Yep. And if, you know, it's to say, okay, oh, well, here's something that should be changed, or here's something that's out of date, or so on. And, you know, also, there just may be funds in there that we're not sort of aware of and because they don't get looked at. Yep. So, some point between, you know, maybe some point this year or when, um, you know, you, you, we might be able to take a look at that. It would be great. In, yeah, oh, go ahead. Sorry, well, in respect to the um, early childhood revolving, <clears throat> we made the change that um, following Thanksgiving break, there won't be a, an early right. childhood after school program right. because we were losing so much money okay. through that. Right. And so, so you carried on. You, you, you talked about that before. Yep, yep. Right. And that's just one of the ways where that we're looking right. at it Great. on an ongoing basis. Yeah. No, I mean, there's something like eight or ten different accounts at the town hall, and I didn't bring the list with me because I didn't want to <coughs> get into details here, but just to sort of like some point down the road if we could take a look at that would be great. And they don't even need to be all at once, could just be like, you know, every once in a while, take a look at another one and say, okay, is this doing what we want it to do? Sure. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other expenditure or budget questions? It was real nice to see the adjustments done and they added up yeah. to, they added up the way they're supposed to add up because we fought for about four meetings last year with your predecessor to, you know, before they finally said, yeah, okay, we got it figured out. Yeah. It was very frustrating, and so it's nice to see it done Thank you. properly. Thank you. Real nice. Spent a lot of time, and my, my team, I have to give credit to them as well, because I'm asking a lot of them, too, to right. not only help me understand and learn, but to make sure that what we're presenting is accurate. Yeah. And yeah. Um, the, the staff principals and, and other staff in the building department head secretaries, they've all been really great in understanding of why we need to do things a certain way to try to get everything in line. So well, it's been really good. You must be given some good leadership too. <laughs> um, the only other thing that I have, I know this is farther down on the agenda, but while we're talking um, finance, I figured we'd throw it in here, is the budget timeline, um, which you do have to vote on, and it was included in the school committee packet mm -hmm. uh, that Donna had sent around. So I will start meetings with administrators, department heads, and principals the first two weeks of December uh, with the goal of having a budget and a draft form by the end of December, starting conversations in January, um, and then moving every month there on out deeper into um, final numbers until presentations to the towns and then town meetings. And I think I said the last minute was just that House One is looking to come out at the end of January, the 27th or 29th. Mm -hmm. So we won't really have firm numbers to run our budget off of until the 27th or 29th. So just kind of, so we'll kind of get our our wants and needs list and that kind of set up, and then we'll be able to see what the state's going to be providing on their end, and then we'll have an idea of what our numbers look like. Is there any expectation it'll be significantly different? I mean, it seems like it's going to be. Sort of like what we got now. Yeah. Yeah. The no, the, the, I mean, the bill's going before the House um, tomorrow, I believe. Um, within 10 days, we'll go to the, the governor. But that's, we're not going to get a lot more money there. I mean, last year, what did we get? Uh, for this year, what did we get? The extra 30 bucks? There was some, you know, some. Well, amount. they're looking to get yeah, 30 bucks a kid. So we're getting, you know, a few thousand here, a few thousand there. Right. But we're not getting the couple hundred thousand you're seeing in other reports for the districts. We just don't have. Right. We fall right in the. In the space between being a rural school with enough poverty and an urban school. But are we, I mean, they've got, we did a little better in the rural school aid mm -hmm. for this year. I mean, percentage Just, wise, we did fine, but right. it's only 4,000, 8,000. But yeah. um, in indications that program will continue? I don't know where they're going to go with it. You know, so there's a, I've been in a lot of meetings um, in regards to where they're talking about how much are they going to fund this bill after the bill gets through? So it's all, everything's, you know, shiny and nice going through, um, you know, about how they're going to support this, that, and education. I think that some of the, the best part of the bill, I think, is they're going to look at, they're going to continue to look at the educational, the funding formula and looking at, you know, because um, the funding formula doesn't look at districts like ours. Um, and so they're, they're going to be looking at that. Um, but the bottom line is talking to some more of the higher ups, you know, the line was they've never funded every everything 
um, to the max. When you look at regional transportation, they're trying to get that back up to the original promise, and we're still in the 70 percentile when they offered 100 percentile. And so it's the same thing with everything. Everything's pending funding, you know, and so that's uh, so it's still going to go from year to year, and they're going to fund different amounts. Um, in some of the fine print around, they talk about they're going to fund circuit breaker more. Well, they're going to, the way they're going to stack it is, and they're going to fund special ed transportation, but they're going to stack it about how much you apply for and how much you get. And so there's all these loopholes already within the law. It's just not this big check coming out to the schools. Um, it is the right, pro I will, I mean, I'm a Debbie Downer right now, but um, it is a step in the right direction. They're starting to, to address and correct the things that are wrong, and I think that's the best part of the bill, is that they're going to continue to have subcommittees look at different funding from how Chapter 70 works, how certain communities aren't winning, um, and go from there. Okay. Got a little speech there. <clears throat> Outstanding. Thank you. All right, I guess that brings us to public comment, if there is any. Anyone? Oh, they have to vote on this. Yeah, yeah, okay. part of that. Yeah, hi, um, my name is Lee Worthley. I teach at Sunderland Elementary School. I I think all of your kids, so I'm sure you know who I am. Um, I'm really here to support the outstanding work of the Union 38, um, District 38, Union 38 um, teachers in the elementary schools, and I'm here to ask for your support um, in supporting a fair and equitable contract for the elementary school teachers in the four schools in our district, as has been afforded the um, other professional people in the district, the administrators, the IAs, and all the teachers at Frontier Regional High School, and the outstanding work they do as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yeah, my name is Kim Salted Poulin, and I've been a special ed teacher here for 10 years, and I'm very proud to be part of uh, this committed and uh, dedicated staff, and it is my hope, along with all of us, <coughs> that uh, the school committee will uh, support a contract that is fair and reasonable and reflective of our commitment and dedication to the children of Sunderland and our wonderful community. Thank you, Kim. Anyone else? Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Okay. By all means. I'd say I'm you know, I'm sort of the outlier on this committee because I'm real old and I don't have any kids or grandkids and so on, but I just think it's important that we have a, as good a school as possible in this town. For, in a number of ways, it, it, it's important. And um, I, again, without even knowing specifics or anything like that, I just want to thank you because my sense since being on this committee is we call a wonderful set of you know, teachers and aides and all the various support staff and so on in this school, and it's just a remarkable place. And so, I don't know the details, but I keep hearing that. So, thank you. Your sense is accurate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, no one for business, so that brings us to. Uh, we want to vote the that's a little out of order. We want to vote that budget timeline? Yeah. As long as we've already brought it up. So we need a motion to approve the budget timeline as presented? Indeed. Is that what we're looking at? I'll so I'll move that. Second. All in favor? Yeah, the discussion point. Oh yeah, sorry. By all means. Uh, I always feel a little uncomfortable with uh, deliberation, public comment, and then vote right away. So sure. like, if there's any really important ideas that the public does bring that we can't really act upon it, it has to be voted on right away. So, however, that being said, I think there are enough budget deliberations prior to that, February, February, March, that the public needs to come out and listen to the budget negotiations, listen to the, um, the presentations, listen to how the budget is formed and provide their opinion then, rather than just on the night that it has to be voted on. So while I'm un uncomfortable with public comment and then vote, I think that the public it has to be here for the prior meetings to, to have their voice be heard. I just want to make sure that gets pointed out. I think it's important to kind of add on to what you're saying is that we present publicly the budget to the Finance FinCom and Select Board prior to get their input before <laughs> we do the final 
presentation of the budget right before we vote. So also that it's out there. So if there is concerns, they need to come out or if they, you know, I agree. I'm just letting you know that it's not like we sneak attack with the budgets. We, 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 we present what we want to do. Right, and you know, there's a tough timeline that we have to, have to stay yep. up against too, but um, that's always been something that's gotten me that, you know, listen to the public and then thank you for your input, we're voting on this now, rather than so, especially the, as the, the, the last ones that lead up to that, prior to that, it's important for the public to come out and, and have their voice be heard. Yeah, I just say I got the same feeling that Keith does. It strikes me, it's always struck me as a little funny that well, we got a hearing now. You said what you said, and we're going to basically by voting right away. It's sort of like ignoring what anybody might have said. Um, but I don't know. I mean, you had any sense, Darius, in other uh, districts or anything? Is there different methods that I mean, we that can work. So you have to have a you have to have a public hearing on the on the budget that actually gets posted in the paper and so on and so forth. It's right. a kind of a very formal right. rule. And it's also, I also find it interesting that we have a public hearing, but we also have a hearing, which is the real public hearing is when we bring it to the governing bodies of the town, of the FinCon and Select Board, that that technically, you know, one would, if you're really redesigning this, this is kind of going off the structure that's been going on for, since I've been around the district, um, that that should be the hearing. You know, you're having, that should be the public hearing. Can we make it the hearing? We just have to make sure that they both can attend. No, I mean, we go to them. On, I mean, in right. fact, we've gone to them. Mm -hmm. Can we make that our public hearing? And then we will, that would be, that's generally been late February, early March. Mm -hmm. And then we would still have until whenever the date is in mid-March to, to vote based on not only uh, select board and finance input and concerns, but anything else that might come up at that meeting. I think we can do it. But I'm going to make sure that it all follows the legal guidelines of what we I mean, need to that, do. Would that suit you better or I mean, not? Technically, from in my mind, they're all public meetings. I yeah. mean, anybody can come in and say anything anytime. And then, so it, I know the, the budget has to be approved, or we have to approve it X amount of days before the town meeting, which has to happen X amount of days, and it's in concurrence with all the other districts too. So the, the timeline gets tough. And then, especially looking at last year, how long it took for the budget to get um, constructed. If if we had a public meeting earlier budget would have been finished and that was so i'm i my thing is just especially as we get closer and closer to that march 17th meeting if 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 if, if there's a member of the public who feels really passionately that they need to say something on march 17th they should probably attend the meeting before that as well because i mean i always thought the earlier you get you know if you got something to you feel about something the earlier you get your input in you know the more likely it is to have some effect i mean because when you're really realistically going to it our february 4 meeting that we have that's pretty much where our budget's at right and then we bring that to you know um, town government and basically say this is what we got concerns so on and so forth if they want any adjustments it's really the major adjustments you know you know we're going to hear we're going to hear yeah. from them you yeah. know what i mean and then it brings us back to have a hearing based on what we heard from them based on <coughs> um, additions I won't even say subtractions. Additions they want us to put into the budget, and then we have a public hearing um, to talk about those additions. You know, um, I mean, that's ideally, and then you vote at the end of that. I guess when we have come back, you know, we try to put enough, some, a little bit of time to buffer that if you had a hearing and there's a lot going on, to say we're not going to vote tonight, we're going to, we, you know, we've heard we have to change again. Um, but I do agree. If, if there's problems in the budget, we would people need to get involved early on, and we'll be asking if there are problems with the budget for people to get involved early on. So it can kind of work either way, I guess. I mean, this year, last year, we basically didn't get anything done at the January meeting because the budget wasn't ready, and so hopefully we won't be in that situation this time, and we'll be able to, you know, get a good sense overall as to how things stand. And right. then at the February meeting, it won't be like you know first time we're seeing something. And first time we've had a chance to even think about something. And so it may be that we're, you know, more prepared at each step of the way than last year and therefore can deal with it a little bit. I don't know. Right. That, that's depends how the that numbers is, are, but it depends is, how the numbers right, are. Right. And that is the game plan. Right. Right. You know, so, um, but yeah. the truth, but the truth be told is that you really, it's a tight, it's a tight timeline, but hopefully we can just be plugging in numbers at that point and we can talk about that. But. Like I said, House One doesn't come out until I think it's the 29th, but it might be the 27th. Like, you mix those two numbers up. We don't know what we have until the House budget comes out. 
And then, as you know, we play that game, we wait for everything else and yeah. the guesstimates of that. Yeah. I'm hoping it's going to be more of a calm, a calmer year based on that. But. Yeah. So I think it'll work, but do you guys want to go messing, making that public hearing that? The only complication is that I have to make sure that the Select yeah. Board and Finance Committee both can make it because I got to put it in the paper and that kind of thing. I'm not looking to amend the timeline. I'm just really uh, trying to just push a point across that if, if the public really wants to say something, be involved, come out, come to the February and March meetings. Right. All right. So, are we ready to vote then? Yeah, I, I think just, I mean, I think we understand each other here. And, and uh, yeah, I'm happy. I mean, you, can, I'm, you can add, subtract meetings. With, yeah. You're not married. In fact, I, tradition has been that this schedule has been voted. I think it just kind of makes us kind of stick to our guns, and that's what it's done for. But. You can, there's no rule. We need really, it says we, last year we had to have several additional meetings, right? And we did so. So, and if we need to this year, we will, and hopefully we won't. But all right. In that case, all in favor? Unanimous. All right. Water bottles. I'm laughing. I know. School improvement plan. Yeah. So, um, you should have a draft of the school improvement plan. Um, this plan is based off of the plan we developed in 2017 just um, to go through the 2019-2020 school year. This year on our school council, we have two new parent representatives um, joining us. So their first meeting was in early October. Our next meeting is coming up in early December where the school council will vote to finalize the school improvement plan. It includes... <clears throat> Um, the same goal areas as the previous improvement plans, including curriculum and instruction, assessment and data, data analysis, special ed services, positive student behavior. Um, one change we've put on here is that uh, of an early childhood playground goal, seeing that's our, our big project that we have going on right now. And then um, school and community and also a going green goal. Um, the, you know, if, with this plan carrying over from year to year, it just uh, gives us a chance to reflect on our current practices, um, identify areas of strength, look at areas of growth, and if need be, where we can go deeper into, into some of these goal, goal areas. So it's been very effective, um, and it's, it's touched on in various parts of the school throughout, throughout the year. So with the draft, we'll be finalizing it in, uh, in December. Outstanding. And does the school council review progress on the plan on a regular basis? So because that's sort of their main thing. Is the school yeah, we hold five meetings throughout the year, and um, I provide a different um, formatted document that includes the goals that um, identifies uh, checkpoints along the way and, and various initiatives and and tasks that the administration teachers have completed throughout the year to, um, to meet those goals. Great. So we are tabling the vote because he only is in draft form. He needs to have it finalized from school council. Okay. So you know, we'll put that off till December and vote it then. Mm -hmm. All right. In that case, capital projects. Um, All right. Take a pass. Oh. <clears throat> Does everybody know Bill Hilder? You guys meet Bill here? Good girl. Pleasure. Hi. Didn't know who I was talking to. Pleasure. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you all. All right, so Bill's been getting up to speed on um, the many projects that are on the, on the Sunderland list and what we have handed out to you goes, does go on the back page too. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of small items that don't even qualify as capital, um, but we're using this kind of as as we're noticing problems, we're adding it to the list. So whether or not we address these needs through capital um, monies, or we're looking at from budget monies, or grants, or however we can get money, um, but you know we kind of have to have a going a running list somewhere, and so that's what we've started here. Um, and as you can kind of see at the top of the list, we have 
the capital requests that we want to discuss tonight. Um, and <coughs> again, when we put, make our capital list together, we kind of, we kind of gone with the route we starting last year, and, I, and hopefully the committee agrees that we have like what we what we need to do, and also to put on the radar um, with the capital improvement committee of the town what we want to do. You know, so if there's a a larger number coming down the pipe, they that they're not getting it out of the blue, out of nowhere. They saw it a couple of years in advance, um, and so we kind of understanding that to kind of space. So I don't say space out, but space that space the time of that out. Um, so we'll kind of go through the first one is um, I've had some side conversations with people is the rim band repairs. <coughs> and so there was either miscommunication, miss, you know, the basically the rim band that goes around the whole school we had on the capital fund last year for $17,000 um, for the rotting that we're seeing. You know, does everybody know what I'm talking about when we're talking about that rim band? It's that thing that's about four feet off the ground, kind of sticks out. And, <clears throat> all right, so this is a picture of what he's talking about, that rim band. There's a piece of rim band missing there. So Bob brought forward with us numbers um, to repair that rim band, but we're trying to figure out where the miscommunication was. My interpretation was, and including, I believe, members of this community communication, that $17,000 was going to fix that complete rim band. Mm -hmm. um, it was only for a section of that rim band. And upon further investigation of that, the amount of rot that's taking place, that project has jumped from a $17,000 project to a fifty to $60,000 okay. um, rough, rough estimate that we have now. Um, So that, you know, is a lot more than what we had planned. Because the other issue that we were looking at, if you look at the list, was the windows, was the window, window replacement, where we had done one side of the building, but the other side hasn't been done. Um, you know, we were hoping to be moving on to that at this point. And then, um, well, before I go into the other ones, let's talk about, let's, you know, let's talk about that rim, that rim band replacement. So. We can approach it different ways. We can do it over a series of portions over a number of years. You know, um, you can break it up to a certain amount for six years, or you can do it over three years, over two years. You know, we can kind of divide that project up. It's a pretty, I'm, I'm talking a lot for you, Bill. Here, no. Right? I, um, it's yeah. a pretty straightforward repair in the sense of the, taking out the old wood and putting in the new wood and redoing um, the siding with it. It's not a structural issue. But it certainly is an issue. You know, the building's an investment, and the repairs should be made as soon as they can. But um, the one contractor that gave me this number did break it down over six years, in, in case that was the way we wanted to go. But that's the total of the number right there. Um, the best I can tell you from researching history and talking with Bob is that those uh, numbers you mentioned before were exploratory numbers to get into it. And uh, I guess it was improperly flashed, and there's quite a bit of quite a bit of rot around the entire. There's a few sections here and there that aren't terrible, but for the most part, most of it is. I just was under the impression that you know, that 17 years, <coughs> you know, that was supposed to take care of it, mm -hmm. and so I think that, and and I'm sure that that was. I mean, my concern is the cost. My con obviously the, the amount of money needed to still fix it. My concern also is, uh, you know, when we say something, we're supposed to know what we're talking about and have it mean something. And so there's a, you know, a question of credibility when you go back and say, whoops, you know, it wasn't seventeen thousand. You know, it's that plus another fifty or sixty thousand, and it's like, do you guys have any idea what you're doing? Mm -hmm. um, because you know, it's certainly been an effort to be open and transparent and honest and smart about all these things and dealing with the select board, dealing with the finance committee, dealing with the capital projects committee. And we've benefited over the last three years or something from getting support to address stuff. And so um, this not only puts a financial hurdle in our way, but it also puts a for lack of a better word, political hurdle in our way because, you know, you lose credibility when something like this happens. So I think we have to work 
extra hard in this case to communicate, you know, honestly and, um, you know, not pull any punches, uh, but definitely communicate with the parties I mentioned, Selectman, Select Board, Finance, Capital Planning Committee, um, to make sure that we all understand what the current situation is and the need for doing something about it, even though, you know, there's nothing we can do about what happened, okay, other than we can't do anything about if the number was wrong or we were misunderstood, misunderstood the situation or whatever, but we can make sure that as we go forward, we communicate as accurately and as fully as we can. Um, we may want to do something like get those, uh, as many of those players as possible down here, have a tour of the uh, building, you know, that project specifically, but in fact, you know, anything else that's high on our list because, you know, when they see something, it becomes, you know, more credible than, than we just see it on a spreadsheet or something like that. Absolutely. Um, I know that uh, with one of the items on the list here, the dealing with the uh, issues around the uh, where the oil tank is and so on, that I think that was presented. Um, and there was, uh, I missed that meeting of the Capital Planning Committee, but even I wasn't sure exactly what it was we were trying to get done and how that fit into generally the long-term plan for taking care of that part of the building. So um, I'm, I think it's going to be real important that, number one, you are at these meetings, and that's going to take some evening time, but it's going to have to be done, and that we're, um, you know, that you really are able to explain, you know, what each of these projects entails, why it's important, how it fits into, you know, longer-term needs for the building, and so mm -hmm. on, okay? and, and uh, you know, you're new on the job, but Darius so far has been hiring good people, so I assume that's the case here too. And um, But that's got to be done. We can't just, you know, it's, there's been a damage. This will damage our credibility. Okay, and the only thing you can do about that is say, okay, we just got to work harder to rebuild it. Um, because, we, you know, I am very much remember saying, yeah, this is 17, that's going to take care of the problem. Okay, and, and um, obviously that wasn't. You know, we weren't under, something wasn't understood correctly. I know Bob had said that there were, you know, you couldn't ever, you can't tell until you pull the siding off and see what's underneath. But he said that the, the, what we were talking about was something that even if there was rot, it was on something that wasn't structural, like you say, and therefore wasn't going to cost so much to fix it. You know, I still like I can't believe that the number that you're quoting there is is. Uh, it's really going to cost as much, but things cost a lot these days. And but I'm assuming that you will check with different parties just to see what you know <coughs> what, what the uh, you know someone else might have a different sense of what's needed and how much it would cost. And yep. Okay. I mean, does that make sense, Darius? Yeah. I mean, in what you kind of you kind of alluded a little bit as part of our kind of our side conversations. I really do think we need to have the capital. Improvement Committee walk through this building with us because this is a building that's going to have a lot of needs over the next 10 years. It's a building that is, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a stick building for a public building, um, which is not the most common um, structure chosen in the sense of between, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, concrete buildings and those kind of things. You're going to have, if you look around, there's different kind of wear and tear that you have in this building with the amount of drywall and that kind of stuff. Um, and so they kind of need to be able to walk around and kind of point out the different areas. You know, you're looking at an aging roof as I walked around on the outside. You're looking at trim around the different, which is another one of our issues that we have. Um, the gable vent trim is falling, uh, is, is failing. You can see the, the soffit line. Um, you, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a building um, that's going to have a lot of these issues based on its type of construction. I mean, is that a good way to kind of phrase that? Yeah, yeah. I, I did that walk around with uh, Bob Lesko and Thayer Street and uh, identified a bunch of these things on this list mm -hmm. and um, certainly get other quotes from other contractors also. Mm -hmm. These are just guidelines to get the list going. But the West End Gable's been, been redone by Thayer, but the opposite <coughs> gable is what's on the list. The, the, the east side is what needs to be done. Yep. Um, so, you know, that being said, um, the question is how to package the requests and be, to be able to get some portions moving. I mean, I really would like to, um, the classroom flooring upgrades, 
You know, I mean, I think we, you know that's where the rubber hits the road, so to speak. You know, it's the, the, the teachers and the teachers and students in the classroom. Um, you know, we have to continue to maintain those those learning spaces. And so, I don't want to you know, have this pile of money. I think we should. That's where I was, you know, kind of leaning toward whether or not we should be breaking up the rim band repairs over several years. And the only reason I would want to do that is so that we can also continue to up, maintain and upgrade the classroom environments as well. I want some way to get, have it all, you know what I mean? You know, um, but and done in a reasonable and done in a reasonable way. So that's why when you're kind of looking at the list of other things, the um, the window replacement, um, you know, again, this is the windows only, not the labor. So that number probably would go up even further. I think that is again, that's a placeholder. I would say right now we're going to have to kind of go a couple more years without that because these other ones are more. Um, I really would like to see the eighteen thousand to upgrade three of the classrooms for next year. Um, again, that's maintaining the learning spaces and to kind of make that kind of priority. I would say like we have one and one A. That's our one A. Um, and Ben and, and and Bill both jump in if I misstep around that. Um, I think the, the, the rotting gable, I think for $10,000, is another one that we probably should get fixed and out of the way before it causes additional, um, before that expense continues to go up. Um, and you're not talking about a, you know, a lot of money when you're talking about building structures. Um, and then we figure out from there how we want to approach the rim band repairs. I think we probably get another, probably can get another quote. Um, to kind of get you know, to make sure we, we firm up those numbers. Um, if there's another way to address it, but you know, is that something we you know you know break over three years? And this is also we go between from the capital committee, and I don't know how much flexibility we go in there with in the sense that do we say here's our problem, help us solve it, or you know, do we want to do it over three years at twenty thousand dollars a year? Um, but it's one of those things where once we start, they're gonna have to, you know, I don't know how they wanna do it. <clears throat> and one, one additional area I wanted to point out was adding, uh, the adding of electrical outlets to the classrooms, right? So with the increase in devices that are being used across all grade levels, there's the need for, for more power in each of the classrooms. And, um, you know, when this building was built, there wasn't the same amount of needs from that aspect. Um, and the building inspector and, and fire chief would um, agree with that as well. So is that not on the list here at all? It is not. It is not on the top. Um, because that, I mean, that particular project would depend on how many classrooms you're going to do at once right. and how you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you know, um, I'm no electrical contractor, but I've watched some on TV, but they're going to have to decide, you know, how they're going to move that power along. Is it going to you know, put it on the outside of the wall and then try to go through the wall, you know, that kind of thing, how you move that, you well, know, you, you have to act, you know, more, you know, you have to add more to the panels, you know, and so on and so forth. This is like where you say you also want to get some of those parties here for a building tour because it so happens the chair of the select board is an electrician. Mm -hmm. He's also chair of the cap planning committee. Um, so that Great. Let's get having started. Scott in here, you know, <laughs> it's clearly going to be, you know, for, you know, in, in, in the general sense and also in terms of that specific item is, you know, absolutely right. something we, we need to do. Yeah. You would have a good sense and pulse yeah. on that, for yeah. sure. Um, in terms of, you know, obviously the question here is, what are we going to submit this year? Correct. Or are correct. We not to that, or so are we not to that point yet, because I was just going to say, in terms of the schedule, um, you know, I'm not quite sure what the schedule is because we had a uh, Sherry Pashtown administrator resigns. You know, and it was her last day of work was in mid late October, and they're in the process of hiring a replacement, but. She was, you know, instrumental in, you know, she came to all the meetings, was instrumental sort of in trying to push things forward. And so mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if things are in a bit of a state of lull now. And so, you know, it seemed in the past that there's something to go out and say, well, we want your list of projects by November or at least by early December. And then sort of things would get put off and well, we really want your list of projects by early January or something like that. So I don't know whether you know, I don't, I'm not sitting here with a specific time that stuff needs to be submitted by, but I think that it would be 
Um, it would be best if we could try to figure out a way to get the building tour done because it doesn't matter what we go in with a list of projects if they don't understand what they are and if they haven't, if enough, at least a couple of the members of the committee haven't seen them and sort of understand really why it's needed. You know, we're going to get something like I think the one with the underground oil tank uh, inspection, spill protection manual. They just didn't understand what was going on, and so oh, if you don't understand it, you don't vote for it. Right. Um, so, so, so I mean, if, I can if, set up. I mean, I think that maybe that's the next step is I invite them out. I think you try and, and you know, and I, I sent you a, at least a, you know comments on a couple of key members of the committee right. that would be important to get to come. But well, see, it sounds like I want to get Scott to come out anyways to give us some just some general Scott walkthrough, number one. you know, yeah. general lecture advice and then talk to him about this walkthrough and see, he'll know where his committee is at. Right. And then I, I can start there and try to get that done in the next month. Right. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's got to come first. Now, the other thing that exists is that, um, have you seen the Roy Brown report about the town, uh, the overall uh, issues with town buildings? No. Okay. The town uh, had a study done by an outfit called Roy Brown Architects that went through each of the public buildings in town and came up with a list of problems. And, um, you know, that's sort of, so that's out there. Okay. You take any building, I mean, you take a building like this and everybody comes through, it's going to have a different list of problems probably. Mm -hmm. So there's that list of problems, but uh, you ought to be, not only aware of that, you ought to you know get a copy of the list from town hall and make sure that you're looking at that to see what's on that list and what the priorities are on that list because you know that'll be that's that'll come up. Okay, mm -hmm. we you know what did, what did that report say? And then I don't think it affects any of this stuff, but the other reports that's hanging out there is the ADA report mm -hmm. um, on the status of the building, and none of these major items here are. Um, ADA issues, but that's also something that uh, that you ought to be aware of because it's another thing. It ha you know it's, it deals with all the buildings in town plus sidewalks and so on. But one of them is the school, and so just for your own education, you ought to have you know aware a cop not only copy of that, but you know an awareness of what's in it so that you can talk intelligently when somebody says something about you know well. Whatever. But I know the Roy Brown report is something that the, the select board and the capital planning people will come back to, you know, to sort of check, well, what did Roy say about this stuff and so on. Now, it's not saying Roy was always right, it's just... Right, the majority of, of, of that report is in this list. Right. And I remember comparing the two and right. most of it, and I think Bob felt our list was even more comprehensive than that list. Um, and, you right. know, there are certain things that they missed that was on our list. That I understand. That's, so that's it's one of, of those things, too. But um, I can certainly make sure Bill gets a copy of that. Yeah, because you ought to just be, you shouldn't be like, you know, sort of saying, you know, well, what are you talking about when somebody says something? You ought to say, yeah, yeah you know, you ought to be up to speed on that. So, yep. Um, Thank you. Okay. So last year, uh, I think it was a couple, there's some damage to the exterior roof or something, and we were going to use insurance to cover that. Is, do any of these exterior problems fall under? Um, area of insurance. No. That was that was wind damage, wasn't it? I think so. And it was something we got eighty five hundred bucks for insurance for it was wind damage for I think stuff on the west end. So and I did you pay to repair it? Was it siding? Oh, siding. Siding that got Nothing. blown off or yeah. something. And we got insurance there, but I think I asked at that point, can we get that? This must be two years ago because I have no recollection of this. We had insurance covering one in there somewhere. Boiler it's sections. up there. I mean, because it's not at, at all up there. And I think whatever, if we we got insurance and they did some work. I did see it on one of Bob's list. Something about insurance paid. Yep. That's what, I think it's got to be two years ago, because I don't remember doing it. There, but um, yeah. we can yeah, look I mean, in town, to see. I can look in and see if there's money. The town's money been great about getting insurance yeah. coverage when you can, but yeah. for something like rot, you don't get covered for yeah. for rot. And, um, you know, because there's not a sudden, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We've got coverage for boiler stuff, and we've got coverage for the siding that was supposedly wind damage. Mm -hmm. So, the other thing that would be good, and it's maybe already too late to resurrect it, and I don't know if talking with Bob, I think it's real useful if you can, if we can go with like a list of what's been done over, you know, some period of time, two, three years, let's say, the last two or three years when we've actually been getting a bunch of things done mm -hmm. and just have a list that's, you know, to the parties in town hall 
it's like when finance, just, you know, here's the things that have been done, here's what it costs, and in cases where we got other funds, like from insurance or from um, other places, this is, you know, how it got done because, I mean, I was in a meeting with, with Scott, and he was talking about that same sort of thing from a selectman's point of view, when you've got a bunch of things that they feel like they've accomplished in town, if you just have a list of them and someone comes in to complain about, oh, you know, this town, whatever you say, look here, this is what we've done. And it's real, you know, yeah. it's real useful so that if we could have something like that, I mean, I was trying to keep a list, but it sort of, I didn't, stuff got done last year. I never quite figured out whether it actually got done or not. And so my list is out of date, but that would be real useful. I agree with Peter. I went to a capital planning committee in, in his absence that he couldn't go to. And the first question was, before he even got to requests for next year, the first question was, uh, how, what happened with the usage of funds last year? Mm -hmm. right. And I couldn't answer the question really specifically because I, I wasn't in the weeds. So I think yeah. that's, it's really that important. That always comes up. That's it's really important up. that they know that what we've done. Right. And, and it also, like, you know, the, the thing I skip my mind for a moment while I was thinking about, but the, Insurance is paid for some stuff, but the other thing that has gotten a bunch of stuff done is grants, okay? And Ben's been involved in getting grants, you know, a, a couple of times with, in connection with the police department and, and other town departments for safety issues and, uh, you know, the camera stuff and so on and, and so on. And so get those on the list too, because again, it makes a better, um, you know, yeah, we're asking the town for a bunch of money, but in fact, if they can see we're also getting a bunch of money from other sources, then that's real helpful in making the argument. And it's important to note that these projects aren't um, being put together through the local operating budget. They're that's just, correct. It, you know, it's extra money that we're found. But then it's, but even at capital planning committee meetings, I get questioned. Well, you know, the ones like uh, we got the grant thirty-five thousand recently. You you sent out about that, and it was like, okay, when's this going to be de get done? And then eventually, it'd be like, has it been done? And so on. So, you know, it's just good communication to be able to uh, keep people uh, up to date on that stuff. Okay, it shouldn't be necessary, but we're trying to make the point in so many different ways that this school being the the largest building in town, the most expensive building in town, so on, that it's in the interest of the people in town government to be involved with helping to take care of it too. And, and so that, you know, we work together on this stuff and always works out better when you do that. We just have to keep pushing that. And I don't think there's, I don't think, nothing wrong with putting in more projects than you know we're going to get accepted. You can put a priority list in there, but it might actually not be a bad idea to put in four or five things and not feel like oh, we can only put in two or maybe three or something. Because if stuff is, you know, on the high priority stuff, uh, it doesn't hurt because maybe, you know, the, there may well be one or two that they'd say, well, this isn't really a capital project and you ought to, you know, figure out how to do that out of your own, you know, operating funds or whatever. Well, at that point, at least, you know, we've heard the, the, the word on, you know, maybe some particular project, we're going to have to deal with it some other way, but it might be good to have five or six or seven pro projects on the list. Mm -hmm. Okay, in fact, I, I think that'd be a better idea. Well, I mean, there is six. I don't think I, I going into this not thinking I'm going to get the six or seven projects, okay. and so some of those. But I'm, I'm not feeling that, like that window holding is, is a is a placeholder. Right. You know, I think the the you know the band. I don't expect the rim band repairs to be done in one year. Um, you know, the electrical classroom has been brought up there. Um, we can see what that will entail. But the, 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 how many how many uh, the one on the floor in eighteen thousand? How many years is how many year project is that to do the whole school? Because that's got to be done. I mean, right. that's, that's three three rooms, and I assume the plan is three rooms at a time. Moving forward until they're all done. And how many rooms are we talking about? I mean, is this like a six-year project? Yep. I mean, that's basically that's the that's the route we've done in both Conway and Deerfield. <coughs> just doing three rooms a year, just under twenty thousand, and just kind of going through the school and kind of replacing old carpet. And how far along are they on that? Deerfield's in year three, year three, Conway's in year two. Is there any, was that an easy sell to the 
once they understand it's a part of a larger project and that you're chipping away at you know the idea is that you know carpets kids are playing on carpets that are getting old and so getting those carpets up putting in um, putting in tile floor and then with area, area area carpets for them to gather and do their those kind of things that can be replaced <coughs> easier over five years and or if you have a major spill or other things that happen on carpets that carpet can be pulled out and different ones can be put well, in place one so. of the one of the <clears throat> questions that's asked about every project is, is this really a capital project? Okay, and the... Uh, and the Anything over 5,000 that's going to last over 10 years. Right, and so, you know, I just, we got to make sure we can answer that yes on and on everything we submit. Yeah, I mean, and, and I can, and in, 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 I'm, you know, I work with some of the other members on other committees for this, but we're also in a very just so for the camera, we're on a very tight budget mm -hmm. that we can't squeeze five thousand under. We can't squeeze four thousand dollars out of taking care of a non-capital project, right. and so in order to take care of the building, that's why these other things listed and there's expenses. You know, we want to knock them off, but we want to put them on the radar. That's why I've encouraged them to stay on these lists. One, we keep track of it, and two, that you know, when you have a maintenance budget where we can barely get through the, a school year on that budget alone just with all between inspections minor repairs and, and and just basic upkeep you know they would say well why didn't you expand that budget well given the, the, the problems we've been having and that's not just in Sunderland I mean Sunderland's been more kind of on the radar but in all towns it's like you can't just you know you're trying increasing the maintenance budget every year um, it's easy in hindsight but when you're on the front line and whether or not you're going to cut programming or things that go directly into the kids hands versus you know, fixing something that you think you can put off another year, another year. And so that's, I just, you know, I just saying that out loud, that's a, it's a tough. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so oh. I'm hearing, I, I'm hearing we've got a little bit more time. We don't need to vote a capital plan tonight, that we want to invite the capital committee out to the building, kind of do a walkthrough with them, educate them <laughs> what our needs are, and kind of reshuffle that plan with some new numbers perhaps. Maybe it'll be better numbers or just more um, research numbers that we can also put a little bit more life into, um, that kind of thing, and then we'll kind of redevelop it and put it on the agenda for December. Is that kind of a summary of what I've just heard? I think that'd yeah. be great. Okay. I think it'd be great, and I think, I think the one there that, you know, may be a little harder to arrange, harder to do, but actually is real important is getting the tour by the, you know, by the key folks yep. on the town side. I think that's, you know, that's a big deal. I, and I'll use that Waitley did it. And when I walked around with Waitley just to make pounds be competitive with one another, there was a sense. We did it during the school day, and all the committee came out. So they got to see not only the building, but they saw the building in action. So when we say, you know, if you come into this room and see how this works or this doesn't work and where we're looking to replace this, they say, oh, I see how that is. And it's just kind of, it does also give that belonging that we're not the school district, we're a town school. And this is their probably biggest investment in the town. Um, and so they, you know, getting an idea. Where some, and I'll be honest, even the Whaley Committee said, what are you going to do about this problem? You know, we're talking about a doorway that was leaking or, you know, that kind of thing where the, the snow, the water runoff was an issue. I'm like, yeah, it's on the list. But they're kind of going around too, pointing out stuff that says, you know, getting their educated eyes on it too. So it was a little bit of, went both ways. And I thought it was just really, I'd love to get that kind of, it was a good feeling going around because it, was, it wasn't just a problem to, Someone else's problem became everybody's kind of problem. So. Yeah. And, uh, okay, so I mean, you know, here we are, 19th of November, and holidays and all this sort of stuff, and people. So it's going to take. You're going to have to. It'll take probably a little effort to get this thing organized, but it's got to be done. So we'll make it happen. Terrific. And the only other thing I want to echo is, uh, it would be good if we can. You know, you've got a Roy Brown list. You've got the. Uh, you've got this list. If we can start to be methodical in terms of what we track over time so that we can both highlight what we've accomplished and what's, you know, so if, so for example, if the list is growing over time, that tells you you need to step up funding, right? Because the list, the list is growing longer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if you're maintaining the list, you know, yeah. so, so if we can uh, report that more uniformly across time, then it'll be easier to show a history. I mean, there's no such thing as instant credibility. It'll take right. a year or two to sure. do that. Yep. All right, rural school aid. I just wanted to announce that um, Sunderland did have an increase in rural school aid, um, just about doubled from last year, so it's about um, just under $9,000. Um, I think it was 
seven um, was the final number, and so um, just announcing that fact. <laughs> so it's a little bit more as they increase the funding there. You're the, you're the only um, school in the district, even though the other ones qualify as rural, they just didn't have the um, financial demand determined by the state. It was a cutoff kind of thing there. So, um, yeah, I don't. I'm questioning the whole how that all works. So I don't know how Amherst gets a ton of money because of their surrounding schools yet. Our district does not get a ton of money, but so be it. Um, but so, yes, yeah, so we'll be looking to use that money to help with the different issues we have in this building. So, standing. And uh, paper versus digital? So, that was a, it sounds silly, but that was a kind of a group vote that we did at the, or group discussion vote that we did at the joint meeting, and everybody said, let's go digital. And then a few members said, um, can we get a paper copy? And a couple of people said paper copy. So I went back to Donna, um, was my secretary, and I said, so, you know, some are going to do paper, some are going to and she was going to hit me with a two by four. Um, because she said, so you got 25 members, each are going to each have their own, like, select a box if they get a paper copy or digital copy for each of the five different reports that go to the five different committees. And then each department that gives a report has to know whether or not they go digital or not. She said, that's not really. Can you try to get the committees to agree to do either go completely digital, do everything that's... So what other committees have done so far is, um, there's been a little small mix, but they've been doing anything that goes out ahead of time, don't bring us paper copy of. Anything that you're presenting thereof, you know, bring paper copies. Um, and then that kind of slightly changed at our last meeting, we just at Conway, and they said, but during budget season, we want a paper copy of the budget mm -hmm. because we want to be able to write on it, we want to be able to feel and go through it. And my whole thing about, yes, let's make the world green, but you also have a financial responsibility to know the material in front of you. And if you aren't good at swiping left and going through and doing it that way and you're a paper person, then ask for paper. I'm not going to judge you, nor are the taxpayers going to judge you for a few bucks in paper. Um, it's just that if we're handing out five packets and you know, you know, I know you're digital and Keith's digital and he's like, I don't need this, then why are we making that packet? So trying to, I just brought it up again. I know it's not supposed to be this long kind of thing, but I'm trying to get some kind of system in place so that people are happy and there's not a lot of wasted paper. I haven't come up with an easy system yet because there's such a diversity of users at the table. See, see, I'm totally happy you sending stuff out digital, but I'm still going to print some of it out on my own. Little you can always print do whatever you want. It's right. what do you want from... And then I print out what I want to print out and it's, I feel like, you know, and even the stuff with the with the budget, I mean, you, you send it to us digital, that's one in particular I will print out because I like to be able to, you know, I, agree. I can look at it better that way and so on. But I also feel like, you know, we print way too much stuff on right. paper. I have a thousand digital files, but I also have binders and binders because yeah. I need to have both. So I'm, I'm happy getting everything digital. Okay, the only problem, I even think, you know, honestly, what I, what I really would like if you want to fix this up is we get everything digital and you're so organized that nothing gets handed out in paper when you arrive. Because I hate to come into a meeting and somebody, you know, well, okay, here's the report on this, you know, well, why didn't you send it a day, at least a day in advance? So we could read it and, you know, we could spend the meeting talking about it rather than meeting trying to see what the hell's on the paper. So we got, you know, Ben, I'd love to get your report just, you know, the day before digital. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think we've all agreed on digital. Yeah. Okay. The, the one thing I'll throw in is um, if I can get any financial stuff in the ROS, like PDFs don't do me as much good as a spreadsheet, like, mm -hmm. or a, even DOSBARF, just an ASCII text file, whatever columns I can, I can hash it. But if I can get the stuff in raw form, it's easier to, to process. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. I don't know um, they all were able of the to capabilities run. of the database yet, but I will definitely take They were able to run some reports, so if we're still in touch with that firm. The, yeah, I just yeah. need to look and yeah. see. Yeah. Right, right. So, I mean, everything's in, we call it, it's IV, Infinite Visions, it's our software, okay. so okay. It, you know, how it exports and, you know, that kind of thing. If it takes a few months to get up to speed, we'll figure it out. Yeah. I think the challenge could be, I don't know what they sent you last year, but I think what it's going to export, it's not going to have formulas or anything in it. It's just right. going to export. Exactly. Data, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy with um, that. 
I'll okay. see what I can come up with. Outstanding. Okay. All right. Yeah, reports. We've, we've done the cattle work, exactly. Are you doing, by the way, paper versus <clears throat> digital, as more and more stuff is available digital for just during the normal stuff the school does, are you continuing to like say, okay, we don't need this on paper anymore and we don't need that on paper more, or does the stuff still end up being on paper too? It's a little of both. Um, much of it is left at the uh, teacher's discretion um, as far as what they need for the kids to be successful. Right. So, yeah, it goes both ways. Okay. I mean, it's never a bad thing to, you know, for all that we add on to, uh, you know, whether it's the stuff that, just in general, we add on to the stuff to get done in the classroom. You know, if you take an occasional look and say, okay, what aren't we, you know, what isn't needed anymore or something like that. Well, I, I think a, um, a major change is that we, you know, we switched to Google Apps for Education a few years back, mm -hmm. um, which is allowed um, and through the purchase of Chromebooks has allowed students to continuously edit documents and reports and grades three through six. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it's, there's a lot more happening on the But then you get the other side that says, how much time do they sit in front of a screen all day? And so it's that constant, you, that constant yeah. balance. You want to be able to, you want to, you know, so I think, I think the best classroom is using all tools. You know what I mean? But we're, we're definitely using um, the Google Suite more than ever. Right. Yeah, I don't want to bring up another controversy for our but. <laughs> <laughs> um, any committee reports? Capital project we already talked about. Mm -hmm. yep. On to the collaborative meeting. Yeah. Fantastic meeting. Social justice and equity. Uh, they did a uh, report on um, diversity and equity hiring and um, social justice component in curriculum materials. They gave a uh, budget report, which I found really interesting. Uh, they had a significant surplus, which they're allowed to retain at a higher rate than the districts are. And they decided to split it to use uh, a significant amount for deferred maintenance. But whereas we are going over line by line by line, they just said, basically, give us half and we're going to repair a roof. And like, we're supposed to vote on, okay, go ahead, just use all the money. Like there was, I don't know what my role is in, in looking at, at their financials. Um, ultimately, we asked for a report by the end of the year of how they spent the money. So I, I don't know what overhead there is there. Um, then there was uh, a, a lot of votes on leadership committees and subcommittees, and then the, the executive director's report. And I started, I was really interested in their role in our district. And there was a um, report of teacher coaching going on at Frontier, teacher coaching going on in District 38, uh, teacher coaching at uh, Deerfield Elementary, um, working on initiatives in Frontier. And I, I'm, wasn't, I was kind of unaware of it, and, and now I would just be. At some point, I kind of want to look a little bit further of how is Sunderland or Frontier actually using the services that the collaborative provides. Yeah, I'll give you, I can do a report for that for the next meeting. Okay, that'd be, that'd be good. And that was it. All right. We've already had the principal's report. Can you go on to me? Indeed. Superintendent. Um, <clears throat> Mine's just very basic. I don't have a, a handout because there wasn't really enough to, to waste the paper. Um, I do want to recognize um, Diana Capuano, who is the SPED Secretary for Union 38 um, District, mm -hmm. um, who retired at the end of October after 23 years of service. And so I just wanted to thank her for her service publicly. And um, we had a little nice send-off party for her on what, Halloween. What was her name again? Diana Capuano. And so, um, just mentioning that. So we're, again, thank you for all the family she's helped through the years. And then that also, I attended the MASC, MASS conference um, with uh, Bob Decker, Bob Halla, um, Dr. Campbell, and Olivia Leon. And so um, we attended many sessions. I wish the sessions were kind of compact. They kind of, as you remember last year, they draw it out over a couple of days and try to get you the vendors and stuff. And, but um, they were informative, um, picked up some good stuff. Um, 
I just gonna let you know that was there a couple weeks ago. So that's, that's basically where I'm in a nutshell, amongst all the other stuff going on. Outstanding. All right. So we have the option to go into executive session. Yep, executive session to give you an update on where we are with negotiations. And we want to maybe uh, go through a procedure where we we're going to go uh, close after. Right. There'll be no business coming back into regular session. Exactly.